I'm John Gaffney. I contribute to Worn and Wound, um, have contributed to a number of watch websites, style websites over the years, and I'm director of marketing and sales for Iron and Air magazine, a motorcycle and travel lifestyle mag. I started reading a number of um, style and gear websites and getting interested in um, the different categories that they were covering and watches really appealed to me because of the the construction, the care that was taken with it, and really, uh, not to be punny, but the timeless quality of that. And I've always gravitated towards things that can really be utilized and passed on. Uh, and I had gotten my grandfather's watch when I was in high school, and I think the idea of having something similar that would travel through life with me was very um, attractive. My budget did not reflect my desires at that point, but that's when I started getting interested. My first serious watch was a Hamilton GGW113, uh, which is a, a military issue watch from roughly the 60s to the 70s. And the GGW113 was unique, and I tend to seek out things as unique as I can find, uh, because it did not have the radioactive symbol on the front because it was made for pilots and they wanted as clean of a dial as possible. So I sought one of those out on eBay. Now it doesn't get much wrist time, but I've always really liked the history aspects of it. Um, it's also the smallest watch that I own. It's a, I think probably 34 or 36 millimeters, which on my wrist is quite small. So my next watch was a Stoa Marine Original. Um, which I stumbled on on a couple of websites that I was writing for um, at the time and really was attracted to the, the big, bold uh, night watch style dial. Uh, it was styled after a German Navy watch of the time, I believe, and I really loved the, the sub-dial with the seconds um, and it has a gorgeous uh, Unitas hand-wound movement, which I always really enjoyed looking at. And this. This was my primary watch for probably two or three years at that point. Um, wore it all the time on a variety of leather and NATO straps and really enjoyed the, the ability of it to dress up and dress down. And it's a, it's a watch that's stayed in my collection since then. So my next watch, I ended up going for a Seiko 6105-8000. And my dad had always owned and worn Seiko growing up. He still does, he has the same titanium Seiko that he had when I was a kid. I've actually gotten it repaired for him a few times, so I, I think that predicated me towards uh, getting Seikos. And I gravitated towards the 6105-8000 largely because of its military history. Uh, for the Vietnam War, a lot of soldiers were buying it at P PXs and using it, and it's Next version of this had become quite famous through Martin Machine in Apocalypse Now. The irony being the watch version that he's wearing in that movie had not come out at the time period the movie is set. This would have been the watch that he would have worn for that time period. So I got a example of these. I actually took it on a trip to Southeast Asia um, that I went on with my sister and wore it on a number of trips and then I had an opportunity to trade it for a watch that I had really wanted for a while and I jumped at that with the assumption that I would be able to pick one up again at a similar price point. Uh, I was mistaken on that and by the time I decided to grab another one they had gone up but this new version is fairly new to my collection. It appeared that the gentleman who'd owned it before the strap cracked um, at the hole that he used, the original waffle strap that it came on, and he put it in a drawer after that. Never changed out the strap, never wore it again, and so the dial is, the dial, the hands, um, is particularly the second hand, which has a stoplight second hand, are pristine. So I'm not the easiest on watches, so I'm still wearing this one, but it's definitely one that I'm a little bit more nervous to wear because of how, how nice the condition is of it. 
So my next watch is the watch that I traded my Seiko 6105 for. Uh, a friend of mine had had this watch and wasn't getting, uh, it wasn't getting a lot of wrist time. And so I had reached out to him when he first got it and said if he ever wanted to trade it out um, to let me know. So it's a Mark II Paradive, which is the second version of Mark II's homage to the Ben Russ Type 1. No surprise here, it's another military-inspired watch. Uh, I have a passion for military history, always have. I was originally supposed to be a Civil War history major in college, which didn't end up working out, but is true. So I traded him my original Seiko 6105 for this Paradive, jumped at the chance. They were difficult to get at the time. Um, it's got a very, very clean dial and bezel. They were intended for Special Forces and CIA paramilitary, the original being the Ben Russ Type 1. And I lead a pretty active lifestyle in my free time. And having a watch that can go and do anything was supremely attractive to me at that time. And uh, the 6105, as much as I liked it, um, being worried about taking it in the water or knocking it into something wasn't really working. And this was hugely attractive to me. So I traded for this. Uh, briefly before I took a year-long road trip with my girlfriend, took it all over the country, up and down very high mountains and into glacial lakes and all over the place. So this one will never leave my collection. I've done a lot of stuff with it, uh, which is really my goal with watches in general, is that they have a story and, uh, and that you live with them. So the next watch I've written about for Worn and Wound, it is a Scuba Pro 500. Uh, Scuba Pro is and has been a supplier to the scuba diving industry for years and they had done some white labeled watches back in the 70s and early 80s that it turns out appears they were made by Nevada Grenchen but I had had another watch I wasn't wearing, put it out for sale, wasn't getting any hits and found this watch which uh, to me had a lot of the aspects of an Eterna Contiki at a much lower price point. So I traded for this, loved the white bezel uh, insert on it with the orange um, pip at the top. It's a beautiful uh, example of 70s dive watch. It's big, it's chunky, and it's been a fun one. It, it, I just got it back, got new seals put in it. Apparently the seals were just like non-existent. But uh, yeah, this is a cool one and it definitely gets compliments whenever I wear it because of its unique look and proportions. This is one of the most recent additions to my collection. This is a Seiko 6117-8000. Keeping track of all the reference numbers is, is challenging, particularly when you're eBay searching for about 12 of them at any given time. So this watch is a recent addition to my collection. Really, I gravitated towards this for a couple of reasons. One, it, it is from a time period with Seiko that I really love the watch design. I also picked it up shortly before I got a 6105 back in my collection and I'd always gravitated towards this style case and this was a lower price point uh, option to get that back in my collection. This is one of their GMT watches which I was very interested in. I try and travel whenever I can and while an iPhone has supplanted any need for a watch period, it certainly has for a GMT. But this watch was a beautiful execution of it. And I happened upon this one on the forums. Again, it was a it was a sock drawer find by another gentleman who was clearing it out of his collection. Original bracelet still even, including the extra links and an unfaded bezel, which is almost unheard of on these. So I jumped on this instantly and I, I couldn't be more happy that I, I popped for it for the collection. This is a... Uh, a fun one and now I'm trying to track down more examples of it. I'd love to give my dad and my brother one. So my advice for collectors is to do your research. Uh, part of why I got into watch collecting is because I'm a research nerd in general, but it's easy to get out over, kind of get extended quickly if you don't do your digging, do your due diligence. So go slow and figure out what fits your needs and how your lifestyle is commensurate. It's easy to jump on a vintage watch, 
you know, like I did early on and then realized I didn't have a modern watch that could really fit my day-to-day -day lifestyle. And that left a big gap in my collection.